Welcome to Recyclist. It's March 31st, 2023. I'm Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, in an effort to achieve net zero carbon emissions, Hawaiian Airlines announced this past week it has reached an agreement with biofuel company Jivo to purchase 50 million gallons of sustainable aviation fuel over five years. The fuel sales agreement is subject to certain conditions precedent, including Jivo developing, financing, and constructing the facility to produce the fuel contemplated by the agreement. This facility is currently planned for the Midwestern United States, and Jivo expects deliveries to Hawaiian's gateway cities to begin in 2029. Jivo CEO Dr. Patrick Gruber said, quote, Jivo is pleased to welcome Hawaiian Airlines to our customer family of airlines that are working hard to achieve their net zero goals. Jivo will produce the fuel using residual starch from inedible field corn grown using regenerative farming practices, using the same acre of land to produce both the feed and the sustainable fuel itself. Hawaiian Airlines president and CEO Peter Ingram was also quoted saying, quote, this offtake agreement gets us one step closer to achieving our goal of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. In Australian news, Origin Energy has signed an agreement for biomethane supply with Jamina, which will see Origin become the first company to supply Australian customers with renewable gas. Origin has agreed to purchase up to 110 terajoules of biomethane per year, with the trial expected to begin April 2023 and extend through the end of 2024. The gas will be produced at the Malabar Biomethane Demonstration Project, which itself is upgraded biomethane from biogas from Sydney Waters Wastewater Treatment Plant. The project is a partnership between the Australian Renewable Energy Agency, Sydney Water, and Jamina. Origin's head of energy supply and operations, Greg Jarvis, said, quote, Origin is pleased to be the first retailer to purchase renewable gas from Jamina's Malabar Biomethane Project. Increasingly, our customers are looking for options to help reduce their carbon emissions, and we believe renewable gas could play a role in the future energy mix. Biomethane is produced by upgrading biogas, which is created itself from bacteria breaking down waste such as organic matter in wastewater to produce gas. Back stateside, a five-year pilot from Virginia Natural Gas aims to encourage the development of renewable natural gas production facilities within their service territory. Recently approved by the Virginia State Corporation Commission, the RNG Interconnect pilot program also authorizes the company to integrate RNG into its natural gas distribution system. The pilot is a part of the Energy Company Sustainable Gas Program, which will allow for the production and delivery of renewable natural gas into Virginia Natural Gas's pipeline system and support the procurement of both RNG and next-generation natural gas. This is complementary to VNG's path to reach net-zero direct greenhouse emissions from its operations by 2050. President of Virginia Natural Gas Robert Duvall said, quote, At Virginia Natural Gas, we are committed to supporting the development of renewable energy sources as we pursue our climate and environmental goals. The approval of this pilot program is a significant step as we move forward to develop sustainable, environmentally responsible solutions while helping our state lead in the progress toward a clean energy future. As part of the approval, Virginia Natural Gas will be able to interconnect RNG production facilities with its existing natural gas pipeline distribution system to encourage the production and delivery of a resilient alternative source of natural gas while providing additional benefits for the distribution system, customers, and local economies. In Connecticut, an ambitious plan to overhaul the state's waste disposal and recycling system is being scaled back by legislators in the face of opposition from both the waste industry and some municipalities. 
the Democratic co-chairs of the Environmental Committee, Representative Joe Gresco of Stratford and Senator Rick Lopes of New Britain, said the new, narrower focus of House Bill 6664 will be on removing food products from the waste stream and mandating recycled content in packaging. A disposal fee of $5 on every ton of municipal solid waste shipped out of state landfills is gone from the bill and implementation of, quote, extended producer responsibility, or EPR, for recycling would be made provisional on its broader acceptance by other states. Gresco was quoted as saying, the vibe for this bill is it's on life support. Senator Lopes was further quoted as saying, We're probably going to move some version of the bill out of committee with the understanding that there is a short distance to go to get some things agreed on, and a really long distance to go to get it all agreed on. Lastly, in Illinois, a new bill would phase out the use of polystyrene foam foodware across the state. HB 2376, if passed, would follow several other states and localities which have also banned the material in recent years. The bill, which passed the House this past week, would prohibit most retail establishments from selling disposable foam food containers on January 1, 2024, and on January 1, 2025, the ban would also apply to food pantries, soup kitchens, not-for-profit government organizations that offer food for needy individuals, and restaurants with an annual gross income of under $500,000. And that has been your Recyclist News Roundup for March 31st, 2023, sponsored by Diamond Scientific. Make sure to check out Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. You can see them online at diamondsci.com, that's diamondsci.com, or call them at 321-223-7500. My name is Eric Provost, and we'll see you back next week for another Recyclist News Roundup.